The first question is, can we figure out the probability Robert will make the team? The answer is no. We do not know the shape of the distribution of his swimming times, so we can't find the area of the density curve corresponding to times less than 58 seconds. Here's why the shape of the distribution is so important. If the swimming times have a skewed distribution, say like this, then the mean time of 57.4 is probably about here. Then 58 is about here. So the area we'd be interested in is everything to the left of that 58. Now if his swimming times have a distribution that's more symmetric like this, then the mean's right in the middle. And maybe 58's about here. The areas corresponding to the left of 58 seconds are going to be very different based on the distribution's shape. So we need to know that shape. If Robert's friend Haley is correct, then it provides the missing piece of the puzzle. We now know the shape of the distribution, or at least we're going to assume it's approximately normal. We also know the mean is 57.4 seconds and the standard deviation is 0.8 seconds. Now we can figure out the probability of a swim time of less than 58 seconds, so one that would qualify him for the team. Since the shape is approximately normal, we can draw the normal curve. The center of this curve is at the mean, 57.4. To figure out where the 58 is, we can find the z-score. The z-score is calculated with this formula. We start with 58, the value of interest, subtract the mean, 57.4, and divide by the standard deviation, 0.8. That gives us the value of 0.75. That's the z-score. And what it means is 58 is 0.75 standard deviations above the mean. That's probably about right here. So the area of interest is everything to the left of that 58. Let's shade that in. To calculate this area, we can use the norm CDF function. To get to norm CDF on the calculator, press second, then vars. This is the distribution menu. When I go to norm CDF and press enter, I get to input a lower limit, an upper limit, the mean, and the standard deviation. For lower limit, we're interested in all the times less than 58 seconds, so everything to the left of this 58, all the way into the negative infinity direction. And that's what it's set at right now, to negative infinity, so we'll leave that. Our upper cutoff is going to be 58. That corresponds to this line right here. Our mean is 57.4, and our standard deviation is 0.8. When I select Paste, it pasted it onto my screen, and when I press Enter again, it gives us our area. That gave us an area of about 0.7734. So this is the probability we want. The probability Robert gets a time of less than 58 seconds is about 0.7734. In the next part, we're interested in taking the mean of four swims and whether it improves Robert's chances of making the team. So we're really interested in the sampling distribution of x bar for a sample size of four. Here's what we know about this sampling distribution. The shape is approximately normal. We have that from our assumption in part b. The center is at the true mean, which is 57.4. We can calculate the spread using the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. We take sigma, divide it by the square root of our sample size, and we get 0.4. We can only do this calculation as long as we assume that each swim is independent of the others. This time, we're interested in the probability that our sample mean of the four swims is less than 58. So the shape is still approximately normal, so let's draw that. The center is still at 57.4, but our standard deviation has changed to 0.4. To figure out where 58 is, we need to calculate the z-score again. So z equals 58 minus 57.4, our mean, divided by our new standard deviation, 0.4. This time we get a z-score of 1.5, so 58 is 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. Since we're interested in the area to the left of that, let's shade it in.
So let's use norm CDF again. Our lower limit is negative infinity, our upper limit is 58, our mean is 57.4, and now our standard deviation is 0.4. Let's type that in. Now everything that we had before is still there, so all we really need to change is the standard deviation. So there's our new probability, 0.93319. This is substantially higher, so it did improve Robert's chances of making the team. So to answer the question, would this approach increase Robert's probability of making the team? Yes, this approach increases Robert's probability of making the team by about 16%. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.